Hey guys, Rob here with 3D Printscape. On last week's video, I showed you how to do the direct drive upgrade. This week, I wanted to kind of go over a couple fan options you have for it, and then kind of talk about what I'm going to use for now, and then talk about what I'm going to kind of move to in the future. Uh, a couple things you will need to get started. Uh, you're going to need an M3 uh, bolt set. Um, I'll link to this one in the description below, but this thing has been great. It has a bunch of different sizes of M3 bolts and then some nuts in there as well. Um, it's pretty cheap. I would recommend having it around if you're doing any type of uh, printer maintenance work or anything like that. So let's go ahead and talk about what I've been working on over the last week. Uh, I took the original fan duct cover that I was using before and I modified it a bit to try to get it to work with the direct drive. Uh, I wasn't able to slice enough off of the top and still get the fan in there and it uh, actually being able to clear the uh, stepper motor. Uh, so this I ended up scrapping even though I liked the idea. Um, I think it would give slightly better performance over what I'm going to end up going with, which I'll show you here in a second, but it's still using the stock fan so you'd still have limitations. Uh, the next thing I wanted to kind of talk about is, are you guys interested in uh, kind of going with a upgraded fan setup? So um, something like the Hero Me or one of those. Um, I'm kind of looking at the Hero Me myself. I was going back and forth with one of you guys a little bit, talking about whether it'd be worth it or not. And the short answer is, we're not sure if it will be, um, but I want to test that. So I think I am going to end up um, buying the fans and everything like that and then doing the video for that. Uh, but for the time being, I'm going to end up using uh, this fan duct cover, uh, which is just really simple. It's got your side fan here. It's going to be using the stock fans like before. And then it's got vents all around the side. So it directs the airflow around the actual nozzle, not just from one side, which is what I was going for. Uh, this was a little bit tricky to print. I had to use tree supports and then I ended up printing it uh, basically in this direction uh, because of the way that uh, the front cage is. It's just a little bit weird. And if you try to print it uh, face down, that front part would turn out okay, but I was afraid that there might be some issues with the venting. I also wanted to make a note, which I'll show you here when we jump over to the computer in a little bit because we have to adjust the offsets for the BL Touch. Um, but if you're Using tree supports, make sure you set it to build plate only and not everywhere. If you set it to everywhere, um, it's actually going to try to put tree supports in the middle of where the vent is, and that's actually blocking the airflow. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Alright, so now I'm going to zoom in on a couple test prints I did for the overhangs and kind of show you the difference. Alright, so here is a test overhang print with the stock fan cover, and here is one uh, with the modified one. Uh, you can see that there are some performance increases just going up around the 45 and 50, and then as you get even higher, the numbers are a lot clearer on the new fan duct cover versus on the stock one. Uh, so I definitely think that this is a worthwhile upgrade. I think it's just like a seven or eight hour print and it doesn't really cost much. Uh, so if you're just looking to get slightly better performance, um, this is a good option. If you're looking to get significantly better performance, I don't think you're going to get there with the stock fans. You're going to have to upgrade them, which is a video I'll be doing pretty soon. Okay, so let's go ahead and start the install process. All right, so what we're going to have to do first is take off our old uh, fixture and take the BL Touch off. So we're going to do that really quick. Uh, we've just got uh, the two screws here and here, and then the two screws here holding in the BL Touch. All right, now that we got that off, uh, let's go ahead and take the BL Touch off of the stock uh, frame and then go ahead and take these fans off. Uh, this fan has the four screws here. Uh, this is a different size bolt, it's a little bit smaller. And then the inside has your four screws here. So let's go ahead and take those off. All right, so now that those are off, we can go ahead and put uh, the fans onto the new uh, fixture. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out is make sure you go ahead and take the screws that you're going to be using and make sure that they go through the holes properly and that you can thread these ones. All right, so now let's go ahead and start by putting this fan into the enclosure. You're going to want to make sure the label is facing uh, towards the uh, heating element. And then you're going to want to use the bolts that came with the kit that I showed you earlier. Um, they've got a really good setup there. Oops, wrong one. So 
So I'm going to go ahead and get uh, two of these in place and kind of lined up. Just put the bolt through and then we'll put the nut on there and just get it started. Then we'll do the bottom corner and then we'll go through and do the rest of them. All right, now that those are in, we can just go ahead and tighten them down. All right, so next we'll go ahead and put this fan on. It's gonna slide into place here and go all the way in. Uh, if it doesn't slide in, you might have to kind of force the plastic behind it out a little bit. Uh, I had to just mess with it a little bit to get it to fit. And then we'll go ahead and screw these into place. Now that that's in place, uh, you're going to want to uh, flip this around and put a nut in here. Uh, the BL Touch adapter is going to screw into that and we'll put that in place uh, after it's actually mounted. Alright, so let's, <clears throat> let's talk about the adapter really quick and a couple things to point out. I ended up having to print it twice because uh, this snapped. I did this initially at a 50% infill, uh, same as this. Um, this one I did at 100%. Uh, but basically be careful when you're putting in the screw here uh, where it actually mounts uh, because this is pretty thin here and it can snap. Uh, so let's go ahead and attach the BL Touch to this and then set it off to the side. Uh, we're just going to uh, feed the cable through like this and then uh, we'll put the two screws in here. Make sure you test thread these first just to make sure you don't have any issues. And I'm going to use uh, a shorter screw. It won't go all the way through. Um, if you have issues where it's not uh, gripping well or it's kind of sliding all the way through, you can use a longer screw and put a nut on the other side. Uh, see, this is good and stable. Like I said, if the screws are kind of loose in here, uh, you can use a longer screw and just put a nut on the top side and that'll hold it just fine. Right, I'm going to set this off to the side here. All right, so now let's go to mount the fan duct cover here. Um, this is just basically going to slide in place. Then we'll use the two screws that we took out to put back in. All right, now that that's up, we can go ahead and mount our BL Touch. It's just going to slide up here as such, and then we'll put the screw through, and um, it'll go into the hole that that nut was attached to. And like I said, don't over tighten this. Uh, you want to make sure that it's snug and that it's not moving. You just don't want to um, get to a point where it feels like it's going to snap the plastic. Alright, see, here it's nice and tight, it's not moving around, and we're not putting too much force here to snap that side piece. Um, that's what I did wrong before. Alright guys, so now let's talk cable management here for a second. Uh, last week, I kind of uh, told you guys I was going to run the cable back here to see if I had any issues, despite the instruction saying to bring it around this side. Uh, I ran probably about 60 hours worth of prints with no issues. Uh, so I think you're going to be fine either way. I think cosmetically, it would look good if you brought it around this side. Uh, so I think that's what I'm going to do really quick. Uh, one of you guys mentioned that instead of messing with uh, disconnecting the heating element and stuff like that, you could just take off the top rail. Um, so I think I'm going to go that route really quick. And I'm just going to do that off of camera and then um, go ahead and talk about it afterwards. All right, now that that's done, um, we want to go ahead and get our offsets for the BL Touch. Um, the Thingiverse page for this said that the offset's gonna be uh, negative 44 and negative 14. I just wanna do a quick sanity check to make sure that is right. All right, so that does look good. It was 
um, negative 44 on the X and on the Y was a negative like 14.5, but leaving it at negative 14 is fine. All right, so what we're gonna do now is jump over to the computer. I'll show you a couple things that I was talking about with the tree supports on the actual cover, and then we will go ahead and compile the software again and uh, drop it on the printer, then we'll be done. All right, so we're here at Kira. I wanted to show you what I was talking about really quick with the tree supports, then we'll jump over to VS Code. All right, so let's just go ahead and search for supports. All right, so we'll go ahead and enable generate support. And then uh, support structure, we'll switch from normal to tree. And right now it's set to everywhere. Let me show you what that looks like. Go over to preview and kind of just zoom. All right, so as we're right through here is where the uh, airflow is gonna be for the fan. That's where the output is gonna go towards the nozzle. As you can see, once you get to a point where it's starting to have the opening where the vent would be, it's starting to put infill there. Uh, so if you keep going up right before it actually uh, creates the top layer, you can see all of the tree supports in there. Uh, over here is where the uh, the actual air will be coming in from the fan, and it's just going to get blocked. In. I mean, it's going to have a little bit of output here, but that's it. All right, so let's go ahead and switch over to uh, touching build plate and slice it again. And if we go back over to preview, you can see that we don't have that issue. Uh, the actual opening is completely clear and the air can actually move around uh, and hit the other two vents like we would expect. Uh, so just more of a quick tip there. Uh, if you accidentally uh, leave it on everywhere, it's going to be pretty much pointless. All right, so now let's jump over to VS Code. I did a video on how to compile custom firmware and all of that. I'll link to that in the description below. Uh, but for the purpose of this video, we're just going to make the change for the offsets for the uh, probe so let's just scroll down to the section we need and you can also just search for a nozzle to probe offset if you want uh, but typically when I'm scrolling I just look for this it stands out uh, pretty well um, all right so we'll go ahead and switch this to negative 44 and negative 14 and that's all we need to change uh, so then we'll go ahead and save that and then uh, let's go ahead and build it All right, the build was good. Now I'll go ahead and bring up the folder that we're in. Uh, we wanna go to .pio, build, and then our board. And then we should have a firmware.bin file with the current uh, date and time. So then we can just go ahead and drag that over to our SD card and then go ahead and inject that and we're good to go. We just have to take this over to the printer and load it. All right guys, now that we're back at the printer, we go ahead and load our SD card, which has our firmware changes. Uh, go ahead and turn on the printer. It should just pull that file in. And we are good to go. Go ahead and remove this. So it looked like it loaded the firmware, so let's go ahead and check. I switched back over to the touch screen mode. We go into menu, settings, info. Uh, we should see a date of the current build um, on the system line. So here it shows today's date and the time that we just built that. So we're good to go. All right guys, the last thing we need to do is adjust our Z offset. I did a video covering that, which I'll link to in the description below, but I'll just walk through the process really quick on the TFT35. We'll go to menu, uh, movement, uh, ABL, and then Z offset. And then go ahead and turn that on. It's going to home itself. And then we can actually run the Z offset. All right, now that that's ready, we're going to grab a piece of paper. And this is where I was at before, which was uh, negative uh, 1.51. Uh, now we've got to go ahead and go down more.
All right, that feels pretty good. Um, so the new value is gonna be negative 2.2. Now we're gonna go over to save, saving it to the EEPROM. All right, and then you can go in and kick off a print. That's really all there is to it. All right, guys, so that covers switching out the fan duct cover. If you have any questions on the process, uh, go and leave a comment below, and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Also, if you're interested in me going through the process of installing the Hero Me or one of the other fan duct covers that uses larger fans, uh, go and leave a comment below as well, and I will try to do that.